From Hollywood, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle presents the Mel Blanc Show. Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Earl Ross, D. Benaderet, Leora Thatcher, Zuki, and Victor Miller and his orchestra. You've heard Mel Blanc is the happy postman. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. You've heard him as the famous train caller. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> You've heard him as the lovable character, Zuki. Well, in the fix it shop, I'm the president of the president I'm the vice president of the I'm the treasurer of the I sweep out the place. <laughs> You've heard him as the famous Warner Brothers cartoon character, Bud Bunny. Yeah. What's up, guy? <laughs> now you're in as the star in his own show. Hello, Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. <laughs> Say, folks, does your vacuum cleaner vic when it should vac? Does your clock talk when it should tick? Well, why not bring them to Mel Blank, who can make anything work? Except his Uncle Rupert. We find Mel on the phone. Hello, Mel Blank's fix-it shop. You bend it, we mend it. Uh, recharge your storage battery? Oh, the battery in your hothouse for the plants. Oh, I won't forget. I'm making a note of it right now. Put amps in plants. <laughs> uh, goodbye. Say, nephew, I hope you haven't forgotten we're all going to the county fair tomorrow. Gosh, no, Uncle Rupert. Why, Zookie here is starting to dress up for it already. Suki, where did you get that high, stiff collar? It's eight inches high if it's an inch. Yes, my lad. It can't possibly be comfortable. Oh, it's uh, comfortable, uh, comfortable, all right. You see, it, it doesn't bother me a bee, a bee, a bee, a bee, a bee. <laughs> but every time I, I hiccup, my head disappears. <laughs> Oh, for the love of heaven. Look, Uncle, here comes Betty. Take Zuki in the back of the shop and get that thing off his neck, huh? Yes, come on, Zuki. Come on. Hello, Betty. Oh, Mel, I'm so excited about the county fair tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. Gee, I hope we have as much fun as we did last year. Hey, remember the tunnel of love? Uh-huh. Betty, this time, let's get seats together. <laughs> oh, silly. But, Mel, tomorrow I think I may have a surprise for you. Surprise? Yes. What would you say if I won the cake baking contest at the fair? Well, honey, I, I'd say, uh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I can win. I'm using Mother's prize-winning recipe. I want to show you what a good cook I am. You know, I think sometimes girls pay too much attention to their looks. After all, men prefer girls who can cook, too. Oh, I don't know. I've heard fellas say, boy, has she got a shape. But I never heard them say, boy, has she got recipes. <laughs> Well, just the same, Mr. Blank. You will be getting a good cook when we're married. If we're ever married. Oh, gosh, honey, I want us to get married soon. Go ahead, you just name the day. Now, we have named the day four times already. Huh? Oh, yeah. Now if we could only decide on the year. <laughs> oh, honestly, darling, you, you should become more serious about your business. Now, now, now remember, now be businesslike. All right. Hello, Mel Blank's Fix-It Shop. You bend it, we mend it. Who? Oh, the Y. Oh, it's the Y, honey. Hello? Yeah? Do I know how to get to the Y? Sure. I was there last week with a friend, and we had a swim and a rub down together. Hey, hey, wait. Look, look. Hey, hey, please, I, I only meant... What's the matter, darling? It's the YWCA. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right over. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> What a businessman. What'd they want? Well, they want me to fix an oven. I'll go over and land all their fix-it business just for you. Ah, uh, that's the way I like to hear you talk. I'll go down there and really sell myself. They won't be able to say no to me about anything. Remember, darling, it's the YWCA. Huh? Oh, well, almost anything. <laughs> Now, ladies of the cooking class, that will be all for now. You've baked some lovely cakes today. And remember, the one I think is best is going to represent the YWCA at the county fair tomorrow. Well, come back later, girls, and I'll announce the winner. Yes, uh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. Goodness, a man! Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm Mel Blank. What can I do for you, young man? I'm 
Stanhope, the cooking teacher. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Stanhope? Miss Stanhope. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. You're sorry. <laughs> well, if you'll show me the oven, I'll get right to work. I told the secretary I'd start right in. This is odd. Very odd. Oh, I do a lot of odd jobs. I must take this up with the membership committee. Well, there's your stove right there. Thanks. And you'll find all the ingredients for baking a cake. Me? Bake a cake? Please, but... please, you were late to start with, so get to your pots and pans. But, young man, the secretary sent you here, didn't she? Yeah, but... Well, very well, then, start baking. I'll be back later to see how it turns out. Extremely odd, unheard of. Hey, just a minute, I... I... Gosh, what does she want me to do? Bake a cake to prove I can fix an oven? <laughs> what a silly way to run a place. Boy, am I glad I joined the YMCA. What do I know about cooking? Well, here goes for you, Betty. Gosh, I'm following the recipe on this box, but I'm not getting anywhere. It says break six eggs, beat till stiff. That's silly. Some people get stiff quicker than others. Now add a level teaspoon of vanilla. <laughs> Whoever heard of a level teaspoon? The stuff would roll off. <laughs> now, before putting in cake, stand near open window and cool off. <laughs> cool off? I don't even feel warm. <laughs> oh, this is silly. This batter won't even stick together. Hey, wait a minute. Nobody's going to eat this cake. I know what'll make it stand up. Yes, sir, I'll mix in a little putty. <laughs> Ladies, come here to Mr. Blank's stove. This marble cake is a work of art. Why, it looks just as though it was marbled out of clay. However did you do it? Oh, I just stuck a few things together. But now do I get the job? You certainly do. Swell. Even though it's a bitter blow to all of us girls, a man is going to represent the YWCA at the county fair. You and your beautiful cake. Oh, thanks. Betty will be... What? Yes, that's right. Oh, but you can't. You, you don't know what I put into it. Now, now, your recipe is your own precious secret. Oh, this is silly. I don't know how to cook. No false modesty, Mr. Blaine. But I tell you, Not I... a word now. I'll see you in the fair. <laughs> Gosh, I hate to think what'll happen if Betty hears about this. I started out to be a serious, dignified businessman. And now I'm a, a male prudence penny. A penny that feels just like two cents. You call me to powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. When two is company, take it from me, a breath of trouble is very NG. Yes, indeed, that little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, may ruin your romance, even jeopardize your job. Yet anyone can be the victim of unpleasing breath, even you. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. You call game to powder. Well, when it comes to getting into trouble, Mel takes the cake. In this case, the beautiful cake he made with the aid of a little putty. We find Uncle Rupert trying to understand just what happened to Mel. Let me get this straight, Melvin. Your cake is going to represent the YWCA at the fair? But I tell you, Uncle Rupert, I was an innocent dupe. Dupe? That's a strange pronunciation. <laughs> oh, I tried to explain to Miss Stanhope, but she wouldn't listen. You should have made her listen, my lad. You could have done it. You've got something on the ball. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've got something on the ball. A great big number eight. <laughs> ah, look. Here comes Mrs. Longnecker down the street. My beloved Clara. So what? So everything, my lad. Don't you know she's the honorary judge at the cake contest tomorrow? She is? I'll just explain this culinary comedy of errors, and she'll make sure your name isn't even mentioned. You know, I can mold Clara like putty in my hands. <laughs> What's the matter? What's the matter? <laughs> putty. Putty, don't ever mention that word. <laughs> ah, Clara, my dear, it's good to see you. You're as radiant Rupert, as... Rupert, you're getting fat. I... Huh? <laughs> I think I carry my weight rather well, my dear. You don't carry it, you drag it. <laughs> How are you feeling today, Mrs. Longnecker? Oh, I'm so weary, Melvin. I spent the whole day trying to find a suitable safe deposit box for my money. And would you believe it, in this whole town, there was only one that would do. Well, that's good. But I can't use it. Why not? There's a family living in it now. <laughs> oh. Oh, money, money, money. My millions cause me nothing but misery. I'd be glad to share your misery, my dear. <laughs> Please, Rupert, none of your nincompoopity. <laughs> nincompoopity. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Longnecker, I've got something to do. Oh, well, uh, Uncle, don't forget to ask, uh, you know what? 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 What, Rupert? <laughs> well, my dear, tomorrow at the fair, when you're judging the cake, if you happen to come across one with Melvin's name on it... Melvin! Melvin baked a cake! Well, it's a long story, but would you... Would I? Oh, you want me to see that Melvin's cake wins. You want me to open my big, generous heart and say yes. On the contrary, my dear, I want you to open your big, generous mouth and say no. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was... You're positively <laughs> insulting. Good day. <laughs> Hey, how'd you make out, Uncle Rupert? Is she going to do anything about my cake? Uh, I'm afraid not, nephew. Oh, but you well, said... Well, for all you know, Betty might be glad to know that you're a good cook. Oh, I'm a good cook, all right. A wonderful cook. I'm the only one in the world who can bake a cake and cook his own goose at the same time. <laughs> What would happen, well, just suppose, for instance, uh, a man won the cake contest today. A man? Oh, don't be ridiculous, darling. No man would enter a cake contest at the fair. Oh, he wouldn't, huh? <laughs> What's the matter with you, darling? You seem so nervous. Uh, look, honey, I know I make a lot of mistakes, but I keep trying to improve myself because, well, because I love you. I know. Oh, Melvin, may I see you a moment? Oh, pardon me, Betty. I'll see what Uncle Rupert wants. Nephew, your worries are over. Your old uncle is going to take care of that confounded cake. Now look, it's almost time for the contest. Do anything. Have you seen Zookie around? No, but there's Dr. Crab, the dog doctor. Maybe he has. I'll see you later. Dr. Crab, that dried-up dog doctor. Oh, well. Oh, Christopher, have you seen Zookie? Zookie? No, Rupert, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. <laughs> Just got a catch in my throat. <laughs> Could I have a pan of water? <laughs> Christopher, you're even getting to sound like a dog. Oh, thank you, Rupert. No, I don't feel so good today. <laughs> Would you see if my nose is cold? <laughs> oh, you're okay. Surprising that you managed to tear yourself away from those dogs. Yeah, I love my dogs. Man's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes it takes me hours just to give them dinner. What do you do? Feed them one by one? Yeah, to each his bone. <laughs> Why, well, sometimes... Look, Christopher, I'm in a hurry. I've got to find Zookie. You know, they're judging the livestock here today. My cow could have been the best cow in the show, but there was a blot on her record. <laughs> Your cow had a blot on her record? Yeah. Those milk people once fired her for being discontented. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, go away. Go away. All right, Rupert. But remember, a cow has the kind of shape that gives us many laughs. Her thighs are bad, her ankles worse. But she sure has pretty calves. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, 
I thought I'd never find you. Yeah, I'm sure glad you did. I was lost. Now listen carefully. Nell is in trouble. One of us has to sneak into that tent where the cakes are. It will be, 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 yeah. One of us has to eat up Nell's cake. Every last crumb of it. Last cake, uh, yeah. One of us has to take the chance of being caught and thrown out. Yes, it's thrown, it's thrown, no. But Zookie, it's for Mel. Oh, <laughs> uh, we, why didn't you say so? Mm, there's, there's some uh, uh, marble cake. <laughs> uh, but, uh, they're very tasty. <laughs> uh, I think I uh, just swallowed one of the marbles. <laughs> Uh, this just hits the, uh, the spot. <laughs> I wish it didn't hit so hard. Zookie! Huh? Oh, and let me... Long neck. What are you doing? Don't tell me you're eating Melvin's cake. Okay. <laughs> I won't tell you. Put that cake down. I'm, I am, as fast as I can. <laughs> oh, do you know what you've done? That was the YWCA entry in the contest. I'm going to take you to the fair officials at once. I'm going to take you there if I have to carry you. Well, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all through. Gosh. <laughs> I'll have to be carried. <laughs> Just be a minute now, dear, before Mrs. Longnecker announces the winner. Yeah. Oh, darling, I've got a hunch I'm going to win. Mel, aren't you glad I'm a good cook? After we're married, you'll be well fed. Yeah. My dad used to say, just get married, son, and you'll soon get fed up. What? Oh, well, I didn't mean... Oh, oh, there's Mrs. Longnecker now. Ladies and gentlemen, there were two cakes tied for first place in the contest. One made by Betty Colby. Darling, my cake. The other representing the YWCA. Oh, no. Unfortunately, the YWCA cake was destroyed completely. Hooray! Mr. Blank, please. But just because that cake was destroyed, it made up my mind. A young man passing by could not resist it. He ate every last crumb of it. Yes, that's what this boy Zuki did. Zuki, oh. Obviously, a lovable American boy is a better judge of cake than I am. And so, I award the Domestic Science Cup to Mel Blank. <laughs> Mel. Mel, what does this mean? I've got to go. Where are you going, Mel? Uh, I think I smell my fudge burning. <laughs> Come out from under that counter. Well, I was just looking for Zuki. Well, you won't find him there. Oh, but you don't understand. I'm worried about him. Anything might have happened to him, Betty. Why don't you worry about what happened to me? I was never so embarrassed. Oh, I know, honey. Gosh, I'm sorry. That catty Muriel Graves wanted to know if I still loved you, even with your dish pan hands. Oh. Uh... Mr. Thurston, president of your lodge, stopped me and... Yeah, I know. He's going to transfer me to the ladies' auxiliary. <laughs> Well, here's the cup you won with your own little hand. Well, go on, read the inscription. Well, okay. Ah, oh, no. Go on, read it, read it. Go on. To the kitchen queen, <laughs> who's sure to make some man an ideal wife. And I have to be engaged to Miss Kitchen Queen of 1946. Oh, gee. And you were going down to the YWCA to get their business. I got the business. Well, won't you let me explain? I went to the YWCA to fix an oven, but Miss Stanhope made me bake a cake. <laughs> the only reason my cake looked like anything at all is because I put putty in it to make it stand up. You... Oh, now, putty. Oh, darling. Well, it's no laughing matter. Zuki ate it. For all I know, the poor kid may be in the hospital right now. Oh, no wonder you were so worried about Zuki. Hey, uh, did, did, did somebody call me? Oh, Zuki, are you all right? Hey, maybe we ought to call a doctor, huh? Oh, yeah, Zuki, how do you feel? Oh, I, I feel uh, fine. I feel uh, great. <laughs> I was uh, singing all the way home. Singing? Yeah. It's the, it's the cement mixer, Pepsi Pepsi. <laughs> Oh, 
We'll be back in a minute for a Zookieism. What's a Zookieism? Well, wait and see. Use Colgate tooth powder. Keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder. Young man, have you wondered why opportunity stays away from your door? Perhaps a little breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, has caught up with you. It's best to be on your guard. So do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Well, Zuki, we had quite a mix-up at the fair today. I'd like to feel you profited by it. Yes, my lad. It should have taught you what people should do to stay out of trouble. What should they do? Well, uh, to stay out of trouble, huh? Yeah. Well, uh, people should uh, look before they... People should mind their peas and... People should... Let them eat cake. Easton reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath of sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at the same time. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather to quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar in. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to Dulling Soap Film. Get Halo shampoo at any cosmetic counter. The Mel Blanc Show was written by David Victor and Herb Little Jr. and was produced and directed by Joe Ryan. Ladies, here are some hard facts about soap, about all kinds of soap. Laundry, bath, flakes, toilet soap, all the precious stuff that lathers and cleans. You're not getting nearly as much soap as you need because the soap makers aren't getting nearly as much fat as they require. It's due to the worldwide shortage of fats and oils. One terrible cause of this shortage is the famine in so many parts of the world. So we cannot expect any great increase in the imports of fats and oils for a long time. It means we have to make up the shortage ourselves. If you want to see products like soap, nylons, and the other badly needed articles in more plentiful supply, do help supply the fats needed to make them. Save and sell every ounce of used kitchen fat. Your grocer will pay you four cents a pound. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.